Welcome to the Warriors of Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. Warriors of Grace is about helping men from generation to generation become gospel men in private, in the home, in the church, and in public through the Word of God. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back, men, to the Warriors of Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for today's show. Uh, Drew is still out. He has uh, quite a bit going on right now, but he is going to be back next week, and we're going to be launching a brand new series that we're really excited about, and it's going to last for a good long while. So today I'm going to end this series talking about a biblical worldview and the news, We're going to talk about thinking and talking about the news through a biblical worldview. A recent headline that isn't exactly news announced the findings of a recent Gallup study that says Americans remain distrustful of mass media. Six out of ten Americans trust the media either not very much according to this or not at all when it comes to reporting news fairly and accurately. In fact, in the past few years, a major news network flashed the caption, fiery but mostly peaceful protests after police shooting, as its reporters stood in front of buildings that were burning to the ground. In the past few years, America's paper of record, the New York Times, ran a glowing piece on freedom in China, where people may not have freedom of religion, speech, or assembly to enjoy even going out to eat. The Washington Post alone publishes an average of 500 news stories a day, every single day. Add to that the New York Times, the Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Fox News, CNN, Wall Street Journal, not to mention the ever-present and even sometimes tempting clickbait everywhere all over social media. And the, the noise about the news is never-ending. In fact, Americans have turned more and more to social media and news aggregators out out of sheer desperation. These tools do offer help navigating the volume, but they don't offer wisdom on how to navigate that volume. In fact, increasingly, these tools just become another echo chamber. In fact, recently, Pew Research found that nearly half of Americans are unable to determine whether their news sources do their own original reporting. Now, we must bear in mind as Christians what Paul says in Acts 17. God intentionally places us all in particular times and particular places in history. Engaged, thoughtful Christians not only stay informed about those trends, these issues, and, and the stories that truly matter, but they must discern between those that matter and those that don't. And not all stories matter. We also somehow have to navigate the constant worldview spins we are subjected by worldview sources. In fact, a survey conducted in March 2021 by the Public Research Institute it found that Christians watch news from different sources. According to Rella Magazine, this survey collected data from news-watching habits of Americans from a wide variety of racial and religious backgrounds, including evangelical and Protestant Christians, Catholics, and even other denominations. Now, the majority of Christians that responded to the survey said that they either trusted the mainstream news outlets or they didn't at all. Relevant reports that while these numbers show a large division among race, religion, and media affiliation, A large portion of religious-affiliated individuals do not actively engage with televised news. In fact, this data was used to determine the role that media coverage plays in the lives of Christian consumers. And their research shows that the ongoing media division is invading not only the political world, but also, you know, the church and the world around it. As the media's divisive nature becomes even more prevalent post-2020, of the election, and even as we're headed into a, another presidential election in 2024, many people are looking elsewhere for different perspectives on how to view the world. For the Christian, this is an excellent time to champion a biblical worldview that does not shut out the world's events, but seeks to assess and even discern based on the principles found in the Word of God. 
And so whether it's a fictional movie or a news station that focuses on one half of the story and not the whole, the Bible offers Christians courage, truth, hope, and unity. Some of the most vulnerable and heavily attacked victims of divisive media are children. Parents play a crucial role in a biblical worldview, men, in how children think through media, and they should train, you should train your children to view the world through a biblical lens. LifeWay Research Survey reads this way. Most church-going Protestant parents of young, children, young adults say their, their kids grew up to be Christians, but half of them don't actually practice the Christian faith, their parents say. And the biggest factor predicting their spiritual health as young adults is whether they read their Bible regularly as kids. These are among the findings of a new study, a recent study, I should say, among Protestant churchgoers about parenting and spirituality from LifeWay Research, which is part of, you know, the Southern Baptist denomination. For the study, researchers surveyed 2,000 Protestants and non-denominational churchgoers. All attended services at least once a month and have adult children ranges ranging 18 to 30. Researchers wanted to know what kind of uh, what parenting practices pay off over the long haul when it comes to spiritual health, said the executive director of Lifeway Research, who also remarked that church going parents want to pass on their faith to their kids and to see their children make that faith their own, but they don't always know how to make that happen. And so when children developed this habit reading the Bible, they grew into adults who wanted to actively be part of the church and engage the culture around them for Christ. The spirit, this spiritual discipline goes beyond the church walls as regular Bible reading can also shape children's worldview, they say. So teaching a child to have a biblical slash Christian worldview is critical in training our children to have proper media discernment as well. Now, we've talked already, but we're going to dive into even more. Every single person has a worldview, a perspective, if you will, on reality. In fact, you cannot not have one. And when we come into relationship with Jesus Christ, the Lord begins through his word, by his spirit, to begin reshaping our minds, our hearts, and our souls. After all, we're justified by faith in him in a moment and yet the process of sanctification or growing to be more like Jesus, it takes a lifetime. And as we begin to view reality through the prison of our faith, our worldview is shaped and transformed, becoming more coherent and integrated because we have a unifying frame of reference. As such, that deepening Christian worldview enables us to think clearly about competing understandings of how we make sense of life, understanding that that are everywhere in our popular culture. And we can also grow in our Christian worldview by reading and even thinking more deeply about Scripture. And there we see two different paths towards making sense of life and everything in it, one shaped by the world and one shaped by God's Word. In fact, in Ephesians 5, 15-17, Paul writes, Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And so we might be tempted to believe the ideas and the values of the world, thinking they're not going to influence us. But Paul thought very differently. He understood that the ways of the world are bent towards evil, towards things in opposition to God. In fact, in Ephesians 5, 15-17, Paul encourages us to pay attention, look carefully how you walk, to the ways the world might be shaping us, and compare what we see there to how God would have us live, understand what the will of the Lord is, Paul says. In fact, Paul's words in Philippians 4, 8 give us a great starting place for evaluating the ideas, the images, the stories we encounter in our entertainment, in our engagement with culture when he says this. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about those things. And so these two passages of scripture, they begin to lay the foundation for cultivating a biblical worldview with regard to our entertainment and our content choices. And so I hope throughout this series you've been able to see that 
uh, learning about the news and a biblical worldview is going to help you, not just in navigating the news, but in, ga- in navigating your entertainment and your media choices from a biblical worldview doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be hard. Mostly, it involves a willingness to move from being a passive consumer to actively evaluating the ideas we see. And then we begin to practice asking basic questions like what we're about to ask. What's the main message here? What's shown to be positive? What's negative? And then we can ask this question. How does that worldview compare to what I believe? And so as you men lead your families, as you watch the news, as you talk about it with other people at your job and so on, start asking and discussing questions like these together. You're going to begin to cultivate a biblical worldview And you're also going to have some great conversations along the way. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Warriors of Grace podcast. Until next week, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Warriors of Grace podcast. If you enjoyed the show today, please subscribe, leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you want to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or search Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find our show on the front page of the website, servantsofgrace.org.